We are going to take a look of number 11 and number 12 together because these two questions, they look very similar, yet they are totally different. Now, for number 11, we have ln of x square root of x square minus 1, while on number 12, we have ln of x plus square root of x square minus 1. Notice the difference between 11 and 12. Here, we have x times square root of x square minus 1. And here, for number 12, it's adding. For number 11, we can do log properties first, and this is how you do it. I'm not going to take the derivative yet, but yet, if you simplify the logarithm first, it's going to be easier. ln of the product, it's going to turn out to be ln of the first, and you can separate them by addition, and ln of the second, ln of the square root x square minus 1. And in fact, we can do more because lnx, well, let's write this down. We can do more on this part. We have two different ln now. For this part, you pretty much always look at square root as something to the one half power in calculus. So we can do this as ln of x squared minus 1 raised to the one half power. And then we can use one of the ln property. If you have ln of something raised to power, you can bring the power to the front. And notice that this is just the ln property, all right? This is just the ln property. This is not a power rule, so do not minus 1. So what we're saying is, g of x, it's just the same as ln x plus 1 half ln of x squared minus 1. So this is the g of x that you want to look at and take the derivative. This way, you don't need to deal with product. Otherwise, you have to use the product rule, right? So now, looking at this as g of x, I'm going to differentiate that. g prime of x, derivative of ln x is just 1 over x, plus, let me write down the 1 over 2 first. And the derivative of ln of x squared minus 1, it's going to be ln of something, it's going to give you 1 over that first, x squared minus 1, and then you, once again, you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of the inside is going to be 2x. And take a look of this. I see that 2 and 2 can be canceled. So here we have 1 over x plus, um, on the top, I have 1 times 1 times x. x over the denominator is just x squared minus 1. This is not the answer in the back of the book. We are going to combine the two fractions. Now let's focus on this. These two fractions, they have different denominators. So I'm going to multiply this one by x squared minus 1, top and bottom. Well, for this part, I will have to multiply by x times x, top and bottom. With that, I can combine the fractions. The same denominator is x in the front, x squared minus 1. And this is going to be 1 times x squared 1 times negative 1, so just like this. And then x times x is plus plus x squared. x squared plus x squared, that will give us 2x squared minus 1 over the denominator, which is x times x squared minus 1. And this is the answer for number 11. And now let's take a look of number 12. Once again, they are very similar. In this case, we cannot separate into two LNs. The LN property only works if you have LN of a product. Here, this is a sum. We just have to keep it as how it is. In fact, we cannot do any algebra at first. We will just go ahead and do our calculus, do our LN rules and the chain rule. LN of something is going to be 1 over x plus square root of x squared minus 1. And now, we are going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is all that. Multiply by this. So derivative of x is going to be 1, derivative of positive square root of x squared minus 1. First of all, let me write down plus 1 over 2 of the inside, which is the same, x squared minus 1. And in this case, the derivative of the inside function matters. Derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. So I multiply by 2x. 
And as we can see, these two and that two are cancelled. And now we are going to work out our algebra. Let me keep the first part the same. We have 1 over x plus square root of x squared minus 1 times. This right here uh, is just 1 plus x on the top over square root of x squared minus 1. And it seems like there's nothing we can do with this, but let's just try to combine the fractions together inside of the parentheses. So I will need to have the bottom to be square root of x squared minus 1. So I have to multiply that on the top as well, minus 1. And altogether, the first part stays the same. 1 over x plus square root of x squared minus 1 times parentheses. On the denominator, it's just going to be square root of x squared minus 1. On the numerator, the first part is square root of x squared minus 1. We add the second part, which is x. And now, take a look of this. This is x plus square root of x squared minus 1. This is square root of x minus 1 plus x. Once again, the order of addition doesn't matter. So in fact, I can cancel this one out and that one out completely. So overall, my answer is 1 over square root of x squared minus 1. And this is for number 12. So as you can see, the answers are totally different.